Arie Lightstone, a former advisor to former U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman, was one of the few people in the room when the historic Abraham Accords were discussed. In an interview with CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell, Lightstone discusses his new book, Let My People Know, The Incredible Story of Middle East Peace and What Lies Ahead. Arie Lightstone, great to be with you. Uh, you were a special advisor to the uh, former U.S. Ambassador David Friedman, special envoy about the Abraham Accords, and now you've written a new book called Let My People Know, as opposed to Let My People Go. That's right. And uh, the incredible story of Middle East peace and what lies ahead. Tell us what the book's about. Well, the book is exactly what the title says, Let My People Know. I had the unique opportunity to sit here with Ambassador Friedman and, and you know, we spent some time together uh, day in, day out, and watch him on behalf of President Trump elevate the U.S.-Israel relationship. And that got a fair amount of attention, whether it was the recognition of Jerusalem, the moving of the embassy, the recognition of the Golan Heights, lots of various different prominent decisions that strengthen the U.S.-Israel relationship. And then the Abraham Accords break out. And they break out on August 13th, 2020. And maybe the word break out is wrong as though they just happen out of nowhere. They happen because of brilliant diplomacy led by Jared Kushner and Avi Berkowitz and, and others. And from August 13th, 2020, when the first phone call happened in the Oval Office and between President Trump, then Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, and then uh, Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed to begin normalization between the United Arab Emirates and Israel, over the next 123 days, five different major peace agreements were signed, and nobody knows about it. This is peace in the Middle East, and people don't know about it, so I was in the room, so I wanted to let people know mm -hmm. how exciting this was. You were in the room. What did you hear in the room? What was going on in the room? So the very first time that I was in a room for the Abraham Accords with the president was on August 13, 2020 at that phone call. And like any other phone call that we have on a conference call, people talk over each other, right? There's a, a can you hear me? And somebody has to repeat it again. You would think in the Oval Office, perhaps the technology would be slightly different, but like any other conference call, it, it had that very human moment. And then after the phone call where Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed said something very profound, he said, in the middle of COVID, if you remember August of 2020, yeah. it feels like everything is happening to us. We're reacting. And as leaders, it's tough to be in a position of always reacting. This is a moment to be proactive. And we're gonna make a Middle East that is not determined based upon what it was. We're gonna build a Middle East based upon what it can and should be. And I'll remember those words forever because he didn't need to do this, right? He took a risk. Normalizing with Israel and the Muslim Arab world hadn't happened for 25 years from any meaningful country. He is extremely well thought of in the Muslim Arab world and he took a risk to say we will normalize with Israel. And it's not just normalize, we will embrace the relationship with Israel. And at, at that point in time, the president hangs up the phone and there's just silence in the room because maybe 40 people knew about this prior to the phone call in the entire world, including mm -hmm. all the Emiratis, all the Israelis, all the Americans, maybe 45 people knew. And the phone call ends and there's sort of this moment and Steven Mnuchin, the former Secretary of the Treasury, leaps out of his chair and leads a round of applause. There are no cameras in the room, there's no video in the room, but there was this acknowledgement that there was this moment where the world changed based upon this phone call and my heart still leaps every time I think of that moment. Yeah, part of your subtitle says, what lies ahead in the Middle East? What do you think lies ahead? So in this region, David Friedman would always say, if you're not strong, you're dead, which is correct. If you're not strong, you're dead. I would like to add a statement to that that I've seen to be very true. If you're not clear, you cause chaos. Yeah, so for the region, what lies ahead, I think, are two different things. Number one is the question of peace in the region is a question of when and not if. I think when John Kerry began with no, 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 the answer today is yes, yes, yes. Now the question is when? And that will have to do with whether the United States of America wants to lead on this or it wants to follow. Well, Ariel Lightstone, uh, Lightstone, thanks for your insight analysis in your new book, Let My People Know. Look forward to it. Thank you, Chris. Alpha.